so excited that you are joining us today. It is Impact's 10 year celebration and we are so excited um, for what God has done in the valley and what he's going to continue to do. So we're happy that you're joining us even if you can't be in person. We just love you and we thank you for logging on. Um, we have a couple announcements. We have two women's Bible studies starting this week. So hop on the app or website, impact3.org. You can find out details and still register. We also have a women's event coming up on May 11th. So if you are interested, it's a luncheon. Uh, you can register online and get all the details. We would love to have you. It's open to all ladies, young and old. So. We are excited for the message today, and we look forward to it, so let's hop into worship. Hey, good morning, Impact Church. Hey, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Did, every, did everybody get a coffee and donuts? And There's so much stuff out there. I may have had one too many of those little churro things, but uh, let's, take care so let's give a round of applause to everybody. Who, <laughs> no, but first and foremost, we thank God for his faithfulness. And the, the amazing things that he is doing in this Ohio Valley. And uh, we just can't thank him enough for that. So let's go ahead and rise. Let's get ready to praise him today. And thank the Lord for everything he's done. So Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for bringing us all together in your house, Lord. To worship you, to praise you, and just to lift your name on high today, Lord. We just get so excited to be able to do that for you, God. And Lord, we just ask that you be with us today. Use this worship. Use the message to change our hearts, Lord, and let us focus so much on you that we just have no idea what we're doing, and it just flows out of us so we can tell each and every person we meet about you and the miracles that you can do, God. So we just thank you so much, and we're going to worship you and praise you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, I was buried beneath my feet. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was mine till I met. I was buried beneath. You 
I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but now you call me a citizen of hell. When I was broke, you were my healer, now you love Come on, let's give him a shout of praise if that's your testimony. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We praise you over and over. Thank you, Lord. Holy, that's who you are, angel. Sing a song for your honor, cause power belongs 
Come on, let's worship Him. Let's worship Him. Oh, my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must be, and Lord, you never do. So I pray. today. That's all he wants. That's all he wants is your heart. Thank you, God. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, praise him. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Lift it up. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Yeah. 
you, God. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and Come on, my soul, don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul, you've got a light inside of the flows, get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul, don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul. You got a lion inside of us, Lord. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, one more time, sing it. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. You got a lion. Oh, Lord, we praise you. We praise your name. Ooh, yes, we do, God. We praise your name. Come on, with every hand lifted, let's sing it. So I throw up my hands. With every hand lifted, come on. It's all he wants. It's all he wants. Yeah. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. Come on, sing it out. So that I have is a Nothing else before fit for my king than a hallelujah. When you have nothing else to say, it's a hallelujah. It's being grateful for just his presence and knowing him. You don't even have to go any further than that. It says you know the creator. That's why, that's why God deserves our praise and our worship. He is the great creator. And not only that, but he, he is the salvation of his people. 
Heavenly Father, hallelujah. Hallelujah and amen. We're just so grateful to be here this morning. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in your people. And when we come together, we're so thankful for the, the joy that surpasses every other thing that we're carrying this morning, God. We're so thankful that you provide, that you continuously provide for us. Even when we don't deserve it, you give us comfort and joy. Even when we don't deserve it, you give us a path forward out of our own mess that we've, that we've, that we've developed ourselves. We're so thankful for our salvation. King Jesus, we're so thankful for what you do for us and what you've done for us. We're so thankful this morning. Hey, today's 10 years, 10 years this morning. There's an extra praise for bringing this congregation together for Impact Church. Should be an extra praise from us because this is my church and this is your church. And God put us together to worship him in a way that no other church can. I, we connect with each other because we belong together and we should be extra thankful for God putting us in our place, for putting us in our place because we wander a lot of times aimlessly until we finally find our purpose. So I'm extra thankful for Impact Church and for the brothers and the sisters that I have here this morning, Lord. I pray you make this, this service this morning just a little extra special with Pastor. God, that you just light the fire a little bit more in him as you did in the worship service, God. I pray that we walk out of here on fire, ready to tackle the gates of hell, Lord, that nothing will prevail against us as long as we're walking your path. We pray you light us up, God. We're here to worship you, to be in your presence, Lord. And we just expect it in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 I don't know. I'm a little fired up. I love it. God is here. God is here. God is here. Hey, let me just give you some announcements. Um, I just want, I want to preach. Can I? No, I'm just kidding. Can I do it? No, I'm just kidding. Um, women's Bible study. There's a new one starting April 23rd and 25th. It's two separate ones, 6 p.m. at Weirton Campus. On Tuesdays, it's the Book of Romans. Thursdays, Job. So the registration and information is on the, um, on the app. So if you don't have the app, get the app. If you don't know how to get the app, uh, grab somebody that does have the app. I have the app, so grab me. Um, there's a Royalty Ladies Luncheon, May 11th, from 12.30 to 2.30. It's $20 per ticket. Registration is also on the app, and you have to register by the 5th of May. <clears throat> uh, the Catalyst Youth Group um, Teens High School meets tonight at the Shoemaker House, which is me. Um, and then the young adults will be on, go to the app. <laughs> if you want something, just go to the app. All right, I'm done. Um, and then communion is in the back. Uh, if you feel led to take communion this morning, it is always available. And if you ever need uh, explanation about communion or anything like that, uh, pastor, staff, me, uh, grab somebody that, that understands it before you take it so you're not taking it. Uh, without the knowledge. So that's it, PK. Amen. How many glad to be here today? Come on, at least two of you should be happy to be here today. Come on, the Lord is good and he's faithful and he's worthy of all the praise. Man, I could just go back. I could bring the worship team back up and just say, hey, I could just, I never grow tired. I never grow tired of telling him that he's worthy. Never grow tired. I mean, I could just keep singing it and singing. Come on, let the worship team know they did a great job today.
10 years, 10 years we've been, 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 I don't say grinding it out, but we, it's, it's, I don't want to say grind, but it's, it's been a grind, but I wanted to say thank you to each and every person, whether you've been here, uh, 10 years, whether you have been here 10 days, whether you've been here, maybe this is your first time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those that have just, it, it's been planning a church has been difficult. Um, it's been a, a struggle in like trying to find a building at times when we first got up here, uh, we were sharing at the 920 huddle that we had service at Cabela's one time. We couldn't find a building. Everybody was having graduation parties and we couldn't use any type of the, um, like Fallsby Community House or anything, the only place we could find was uh, uh, the Cabela's uh, in Wheeling. And so we had a service in Cabela's in Wheeling. So uh, we just been floating around, floating around, but God's always been faithful. And then we started getting a little momentum and then COVID hit and then, but that didn't stop us. We just kept going and uh, we did outdoor services and had a great time with that. And God's just been blessing. So thank you. Thank you to each and every one that served, that helped, that, that stays involved, that's committed to come in and being here that that takes time and fellowships with one another and talks to people and greets one another and gets involved in church that we're not the the church of the frozen chosen or the church of the baptized and pruned juice but we are the church that's on fire that it's the church that was designed uh, in the book of acts uh, when that church was so on fire in the book of Acts that one man said that these men are drunk and Peter had to stand up and said these men are not drunk as you suppose for it's the third hour of the day but this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel that in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and so a lot of times people said you know this is a little awkward of a church they're in the hand raising is a lot of uh, it's loud that's how the church was designed your, your, your lens is out of the lens of your life. If you can find the word of God uh, in the word of God that tells me that we're doing something that is not permitted in the word, I, I will stop because I will, tell, I will give up ministry because you're not going to find it. You read all through the book of Psalms, it talks about praising the Lord, praise him, praise him with instruments, praise, let everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. The book of Acts talks about great joy was in the land when people got saved and people started, Paul and Silas were in prison and praise broke out. So much praise broke out, the prisoners were listening to them, those that were down, down the way. They weren't in the prison, just nobody knows. There was a praise that broke out. We, we got to get Jesus came to demolish religion. It was the Pharisees and the Pharisees that we still have the lens of that, that no, it shouldn't be that. You shouldn't have freedom. But whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I said it one time, and I'll say it again. I, I, a story, I was preaching in Arkansas, and a, I was doing a revival, and I, I got to preach, and I jumped up on a pew and just got to, I call it, I don't call it, somebody called it, but rip snorting preaching. Rip snorting preaching. You're ripping, and then the snorting, you're trying to catch your breath. You're preaching so hard, you know, and, and ladies, I'm not coming back to his revival. He's too loud. He's too loud. And I said, hey, you know. Jesus is loud. Oh, show me where he's loud. I said, it says when he comes back, he's descending with a shout. He ain't coming back like, hey. <laughs> you read it for yourself. It says the Lord himself is going to descend with a shout. I believe he's going to be like, hey. And I'm going to be like, hey. So if it's a little uncomfortable for you at times, maybe you're new, fight through that, that spirit of religion. Fight through that, 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 I call it that Sadducee spirit. Fight through that because there's freedom. He died that you would have freedom. Freedom to lift your hands. Freedom to worship him. You might not be as outspoken as maybe somebody you're sitting beside but lift your voice. Don't be afraid to lift your hands. Don't be afraid to tell them that you love them. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. That was just a mini sermon. Just threw it in there. Hey, listen, just so glad you're here at Impact today. I don't know why I got going on that, but I did. It's 10-year anniversary. I can. 
Hey, listen, after, some of you might have seen it when you come walking in, but after service, we're throwing what we're calling an after party, and somebody said, oh, you can't throw a party in church. Yes, you can. We talked about it at the 945 service. When the prodigal son, when the father seen the prodigal son, this is word, when he seen the prodigal son, he told everybody in the house, he had, his son had been living in a hog pen, and he says, I'm going back. I'm going back. And when the father looked out and he seen, he said, yo, get the calf, cut it up, get the stuff out. It's about the party up in here. The son has come home. The Bible, said, the Bible says all heaven rejoices when one sinner, heaven throws a party when someone gives their heart to the, oh, you ain't ready. So that's why we're calling an after party. So somebody's like, well, you don't throw potes at our church. Well, you're not impact. Hey, listen, so after, as soon as service is over, I'm going to give you ample time. You're going to be able to get out there. Listen, even, I know we have a lot of work to do once service is over. We got to tear down. We got to get all that kind of stuff. But I'm encouraging all the leaders. I'm encouraging all the helpers, all those who serve, all those who do that. Please take time after service. Get out there. Love on somebody. Meet somebody. Introduce yourself to somebody. There's plenty of stuff. We just had the 945. If you were there, there was coffee. There was, I mean, there was so much stuff. And now they're changing it all out. And there's all new stuff coming. Yeah, yeah, all new stuff. I, 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 I thought they said shrimp. There's like shrimp cocktails. That's how we roll at Impact. That's how we, we roll at Impact. Don't get me started up in here. And so make sure, listen, even five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, please make sure, get out there, and I'm going to preach about it here in a moment. You ha- it, it, fellowship, relationship, And communication is important. It's vital for Impact Church. We have a phrase we've always used, don't do life alone. And that's where it comes from. It's it's not just like, hey, how you doing? And keep going. It's important to have relationships and friendships. Amen? Amen. Let me jump into it because I want to give you ample time to go back there and and really have time to fellowship and don't feel like you're running out the door. Because I know usually it gets around 1230 or so I see people like moving a little bit. Hey, Mark chapter four, verse 37 is kind of where we're going to run a little bit. So give me some time today. And if I go kind of quick, you'll be all right. Mark chapter four, verse 37, it says soon, soon, let me, let me give, let me give, let me give a little uh, context into this. Uh, Mark chapter four, uh, Jesus is, is talking with the disciples and he says, Hey, let us cross over to the other side. Unbeknownst to them, they did not know that uh, a man named Legion was over on the other side, and he was going to get set free. So he gets with the disciples and said, hey, let us get into the boat. Let us cross over to the other side. They're like, well, sweet. Let's go over to the other side. And as they're crossing over to the other side, late in the midnight hour, it says, soon a violent windstorm came up, and the waves were breaking in to the boat so that it was being swamped. I was telling the 945 service that I love the detail. This is not the King James version, but this is our new living translation. This is the Berean version. I just, I'm a detail type guy. If you've been here long enough, you'll know I'm, I'm all about the details um, in life. Just, just the small things, even when we have leadership meetings and stuff like that. And sometimes it doesn't make sense, but I always, it's, it's always the details. I, I, I just think God's in the details. And I like this version of it. They, it's not just a, a great windstorm arose, but it talks about the waves beating into the boat and that they were swamped. And I told the story at the first service for my senior trip in high school. I went to Vir- Virginia Beach with a bunch of buddies and they cleared the beach out uh, because uh, a great uh, uh, a windstorm, a big storm arose. And, you know, you're a teenager, you know, 18 years old, you don't listen. And so we waited till they all they all left the beach. And so we ran out there and it was like the worst mistake I've made in my life. And so I went out there. I was like, Oh, look at these waves. And they were just massive. They were just coming. And I got hit by one wave and then they got spun up and flipped around and I was trying to jump up and I was trying to catch my breath. And it was just one wave after one wave after one wave. And I was, and I literally in my mind, you know how, when you're going through something, it all goes slow. If you've ever been kind of like a near-death experience in life, everything starts to go like in slow motion. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm going to die. 
Like, I'm 18 years old. I'm, I'm going to die. I could not catch. And every time, and I caught just a little bit of breath, and I had another wave hit me, and it was spinning me around. I couldn't, I couldn't get on my feet. And I thought, what's going to be more embarrassing that, I, that I'm drowning in, like, three foot of water? Because I was near the shore, but I couldn't get on my feet. The waves were so massive. But that's, 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 that's how life can be. And that's why I love the detail of this uh, of the Berean version because it talks about the waves coming in and it talks about being swamped. Has anyone here ever felt swamped before? What do you mean by swamp? It's just one thing after another, after another, after another. And you think to yourself, man, if one more thing happens, if one, if one more thing, if one, if, 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 and you're telling yourself and it's just, and you're trying to catch your breath, and, and it's just one thing after another after another. When I, when I pastored in Atlanta, Georgia, um, I was on the verge of writing, writing a book. And it'll tell my age a little bit. Um, I end up, it's on, a, it's on a floppy disk right now. And so I don't even know how you would transfer it over to something else. But I was on the verge of writing a book, um, and then my, my brother died unexpectedly, and it just kind of flipped things a little bit. I was just... I was swamped in life and was trying to, you know, catch my breath in life. But I was, I was on the verge of writing a, a book, and I still have it. Never got to it maybe one day, but I was going to write a book, Hold On, Help is on the Way. In one of those chapters, I talk uh, um, extensively about Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 and actually Mark chapter 5. And I, and I talk about what I dive into in this, in this that I want to just take a minute and talk to you today about is in Mark chapter 4, Jesus is dealing with uh, what we would say professional fishermen. These men, their livelihood was based on a boat. You know, they put all this money, they, they have it. It's so many times we look at uh, the scripture through the context of 2000, 2020, to, through the lens of that, when you have to know their time, the season, what was happening then. And so, you know, they didn't have a weather app that they went to to see if a storm was coming. They, they, they based it on, they were the men of a men. They would be able to tell a shift in the wind to be able to tell whether a storm was coming. Whether it had been a south wind and all of a sudden it shifted a north wind and they would be able to tell a storm was coming. They would be able to tell about a shift in the barometric pressure pressure, even though they didn't probably even have barometric pressure, the name back then, but they knew it even before because their livelihood, they couldn't afford to go out in the middle of something. So not one time when Jesus says, let us cross over to the other side, they knew it was a long journey. Not one of them says, Hey Jesus, you're the carpenter. I just want to let you know that there's been a shift. I can tell by the sea. I can tell by the tide that you can't see it right now. It looks beautiful right now, but there's a storm coming. Not one of them speak up. Not one of them says, hey, listen, this is, this is not going to be a good time to go. This is, let's give it a moment. I know you want to get over there, but they, they don't speak up. They don't say anything. They just begin to cross over. And so within this, within this portion that I talk about in my book that I never published, or it's on my floppy disk, is that I call it, it wasn't just a natural storm. It's what I call a spirit on assignment. That, that the enemy was on assignment because the enemy knew legion was in, let's use our, our terminology here, Bible. The enemy had legion bound in Mark chapter 5. Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side. That's where Jesus is getting to legion who's in Mark chapter 5. We're dealing in Mark chapter 4. You all still with me? And so the enemy knew that. So the enemy says, you know what? I'm going to do everything in my power to get them to turn around. Because I know if they get to this next chapter, or if they get to chapter 5, or if they get to oh, on the other side, that I'm going to be ruined. Because Mark chapter 5 talks about legion, legion for many. He says, we rule, we reign over that territory. The enemy ruled and reigned over that ter territory. But they knew that the chain breaker was coming. They knew the deliverer was coming. They knew the way maker was coming. So the enemy, are you still with me? I don't want, don't I don't, I don't want to lose you today. And so the enemy will throw everything in the kitchen sink at you. 
to get you to quit, to get you to give up, to get you to turn around. It's what we call a spirit, what I call a spirit on assignment. That's why coming to church sometimes can be a battle. Because the enemy knows that if you step foot in here, the word's going to be preached, so you're going to get word in them, word in you. Worship's going to come forth, so you're going to get a little Holy Spirit power in you. And so the enemy will do everything. You ever notice that, that sometimes your greatest battles and your greatest difficulties and your, your greatest... Uh, I probably shouldn't say this because this is Facebook Live. 945, we don't do it, but here we do it. I, I told them, and I'll tell you, I, I'm just an open book anyways. I, I, so my wife and I, some of our greatest arguments or disagreements have come on a Sunday morning. Any, I, I'm by myself. I just making sure I was, I was feeling lonely there for a second. Why? Because it's a spirit on assignment. He'll do everything in his power. That's why you, you could, you could be busy all week and, and got things and you're getting up and you're going here and you're doing this and you're taking the kids and all we got to go here and I got to go to work and I got to make sure this gets done and we got to go shopping here. And then when Sunday rolls around, people say, I'm just so tired from the week, but I don't know why I can't get out of bed. The enemy is on assignment. I talked about last week, uh, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter four, verse 27. Y'all remember this? And I talked about not giving the enemy an opportunity and not opening the door. Anybody familiar with that? If not, you can go back. I think you can see it on the app. But in Ephesians chapter four, verse 27, in the new King James version, I like how it says this. It says, don't, we're still stuck in Mark somewhere, but we can get to Ephesians somehow. Ephesians, sometimes it, it, it just makes a, it's like a spirit on assignment. Like it'll try to mess up things, but you can't mess it up. Jill pointed, so it must be up there. Thank you. Ephesians chapter four, verse eight says, do not give place. Somebody shout place. place. It says, don't give place to the enemy. Don't give him an opportunity. I'll put it this way. Don't give the enemy ground. And this is, this is, uh, it's going to make sense here in a moment because I got to pull it together. Don't, don't let him gain ground in your life. And what I mean by that is that word place in the Greek there, where it says place, that's why it's got like kind of like the little A there and stuff. In the Greek, it's actually the word topos. And that's how we get topographical map. Because if you spell a topographical graph, map, it's broke down topos, topo. which depicts um, a geographical location. And so he's saying, don't give ground, don't give topos to the enemy. Don't give him, don't let him have an area in your life. What do you mean, don't let him have an area in my life? Topos means area, somebody shout area. area. Don't, 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 don't fall asleep on me, watch. He says, don't give him ground, don't give him the topos, don't give him an area, what do you mean? Uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is that the enemy is looking for an area in your life. What do you mean by area? Money? I'm trying to think time and I'm trying to, I'm just trying to, if somebody would just say preach it, I'll preach it. Okay, you said it, you said it, I didn't. It could be money. We say, how can it be that? The enemy goes to God and says, listen, if you take all Job's resources, he'll just curse God and die. He'll curse you and die. Right? And so the enemy will find an area that says, man, if I can, if I can, if I can mess with their finances, they'll stop going to Impact Church. They won't go there and they won't fellowship with anybody anymore. If, 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 if I can, if I can get the topos, if I can, if I, if I can get, if I can get within their health, if I can start messing with their health, they, 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 they won't come. 
That's why I love, Robin, that you come every Sunday. You're up here at front. And I know, I know, but, but not giving the enemy ground. Not giving him that toe post. And not only that, you greeted today. I looked on the thing. Did you greet today? Is that correct? Where I read? And you greeted today. Your marriage. Your marriage. Your marriage, the kids, the house, the employment, business, ministry, your mindset. But you have to be tenacious in this regards because even Job had everything removed. And he says, even though, the, even though things may be slayed, I'll still praise him. I'll still glorify him. I'll still, a lot of times we, we predicate, we predicate our praise. We predicate our worship by the things that we have in our life. If things are going well, then we really praise them. If things are wonderful, we really praise him. If car is running well, we praise him. If money's in the bank account, we praise him. But God says, I'm looking for somebody that even when the car's not running, you'll praise them. I'm looking for somebody that even when you've been fighting and been arguing, when the health is not looking good, when things are not going well, I'll still praise them. I'll still glorify them. Why? Because I'm not giving him topos. I'm not giving him ground in my life. I'm not letting him gain. I'm not going to be pouting. I'm not going to be complaining because when I pout and I complain, and I argue and I fuss, I'm going backwards. I'm retreating and that's giving the enemy ground. But when I praise, oh, I wish I had one preacher in here. When I praise, when I worship, when I speak the word, I'm pushing back. I'm gaining. I got to go. I got to go. Listen, the enemy wants, wants the waves of life to consume you in every area of your life. Putting those two together, Mark 4 Going back to Mark 4, it says the waves were what? I'm a visual guy. The waves are coming in. It's swamping them. Being swamped. This is why it's important to stay planted in church. Listen, whether, whether you ever come back here again, whether you, maybe you don't prefer my, I guess I'll put the word method. Maybe you don't like the excitement. Maybe you don't like the loudness. Hey, listen, that's, I just got to go with what God told me. And all I know is that I never forgot that I was in a church not far from here, 19 years old, and I heard it as loud, as clear as I'm hearing those church bells going off in the distance right now, that God told me, he says, listen, son, I'm going to catch you on fire and the world's going to come watch you burn. And I can tell you that's been 30 something, 30 something. Well, I ain't telling my age, but maybe 10 years ago, <laughs> it's been a minute. It's been a minute and I don't let the fire burn out in my life. I'll still praise him. I'll still glorify him. I'll still magnify him. I'll still lift up. But that's why it's important. That's why it's important. I say not, not the church, because it's not about attendance. It's not about like, oh, I go to church. The enemy don't care you go to church per se. Well, I go to impact. Okay. But do you know him? <laughs> but do you know him? Hello. And what I'm saying is that and I don't want to make sure if you're new to, to the gospel, if you're new to following Jesus and you gave your heart to Jesus and everybody and somebody told you, hey, life's going to be great. Once you give your heart to Jesus, they lied to you. Now, that's an oxymoron what I should be saying. But I, I want you to be king. Because what, is, what happened, what's happening, and you say, why would you say such a thing? Is because... You are battling a nasty, stalking, crazy ex. You said, what do you mean? The Bible says that you were once walking in darkness. The enemy is of darkness. 
And so when you were in the darkness, you danced with the devil, you partied with the devil, you celebrated with the devil, you ate with the devil, you fellowship with the devil. But the moment you gave your heart to the Lord, you're walking in the light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Light has come into your life. The Bible says now you are the light that should not be hidden, but you are light. But now darkness is mad that you're walking in light and darkness is not going to let you get away easy. Darkness, I told you, it's a vengeance, old nasty old ex that will try to slice your tires that will try maybe not slice your tire but you might come out and you got a flat tire you've had the roughest day you've ever had and you're trying to get somewhere and you're trying to get to church and you got a flat tire the car won't work car won't get started the kids are arguing people are yelling I gotta go here I gotta do this no one's eating where's breakfast where's it I don't know but we gotta get to church And that's why it's important. Hey, Jonathan, can you bring that out? That's why it's important that you have a covering. I love that first song that we sang. What's the song? John, you know I jack them all up, buddy. <laughs> Glorious Day. And there's a portion of that song on Glorious Day that says what? I need a shelter. I don't know what the rest says. <laughs> they pull it up, they're quick like that but it says I need a shelter and when he sang that I was like oh that's that's so true because that's what impact impact is the shelter the Bible says that he who dwells in the shelter y'all you ready for that he who dwells in the shelter of the most high hello boom this is your shelter this is this is this is this is why church is important. But but you can you can I know 10 year anniversary I shouldn't say this but I'm going to. You can come to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and still don't get it. You say get what? You just, you, you don't you, you don't get what's going on here. It talks about, as, as a Christian, you're going to experience waves in your life. The waves are going to be just like Mark chapter 4. The waves are going to try to swamp you. And it says they're in this boat, and the waves are coming, and the waves are coming. But if I have, if I have shelter... And you see these, all these different things I have. You probably can't read them, and I was going to spin them around, but I didn't want you falling out and like trying to follow them. But on here, on this umbrella somewhere, it says friends. You have got to have friends in church. You have got to have friends. Okay, let me put it this way because then there's no more clapping. Not only do you have to have friends in church, you have to have godly friends in church. You have to have people that still believe that sin is sin. All right, I got to go. All right, let me. Time, time is ticking. Time, time is gone. You, we, you, you have to have friends. It is important. If you've been at this... I'm trying to be careful, but it's 10 year anniversary. I think I'm exempt. <laughs> if you have been at this church for three or four years and you don't have four or five friends in this church, there's something wrong. Something majorly wrong. You don't get it. You, you don't get it. I was going to grab Butch's cell phone right now and check his text messages. And the reason why, I guarantee it. I can almost guarantee his top 10 text messages, at least four or five of them are going to be church people. I'm assuming Jill's going to be in there. I'm assuming the kids are going to be in there and the rest are going to be church folks. I know I'm going to be on there because he sent me a text the other day. You doing all right? Why? Because when you, when you have this shelter, when you have friends, when you fall down, you need somebody that's going to come and pick you up. I have Bible study on here. I have, well, you say Bible study, you, 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 knowing the word. 
connect groups, getting around people. It's the shelter that when the rains of life come, that you have this shelter. One is worshiping together. There's something so powerful when we worship together. Let, let me take a poll real quick, and I got to go. I'm going to go quick. But how many of you say you can, f I don't want to use the word feel because it's not a feeling. Because you, if you get with feelings, then you're really jacked up. But that's a whole other message at a whole other time. Let me say it this way. How many of you that today when we started singing and Nicole was singing and John started singing, how many of you could feel the presence of God? Yeah. I mean, you would have to be, you would have to be, you would have to be the frozen chosen not to. And it's about, I didn't feel it. I did not feel that level of anointing today, preacher. <laughs> then you're on a whole nother level than us. You're too big time for us. You got to go to church a big time. Where their level of anointing goes so much higher than us. There's something so powerful when we worship together. There's something so powerful when we worship together. I have on here somewhere, prayer partners. This is another thing. You have got to, whether you've been here 10 days, whether you've been here the first day, whether, whether you're a CEO and you came back, you have got to have a prayer partner in your life. You say, what do you mean? There has got to be somebody in your life here at Impact Church. And, and, and maybe, I'm keeping it here. There's got to be somebody in this church that when the waves come to consume you, when you're being swamped, can you all see me under this umbrella? As it was getting quiet there. Gabe, can you see me? If y'all hadn't seen Gabe, they got a beautiful baby. I was going to say something last week, but I'm saying it today. When life is swamping you and you're just, you have to have somebody that you can text or somebody you can even call and say, will you pray with me? Can you, can you pray? Can you pray? I, I need, I need somebody to pray. I need, you have to, if you, I don't care how long you've been here. And that's why we have a, you, you call it the, the sinner's after party. I can't believe Impact Church is doing after parties. We're going on the wrong road up in here. No, that's where you meet your prayer partners. That's where you're hanging. John, the worship leader. Where do you think I met him? Theo Yanni's eating leg lamb thing. What did we get? Steph, Steph left, I think. Leg lamb chops. He ain't out there so good. Right? Where did, did we not meet there? Theo Yanni's. First time I had salad and leg of lamb or whatever it was. Lamb chops, they're so good. Prayer partners, people that you're connected with. That is, that is your shelter in life. When the storm, because the storms will come. But you know what? I have this. That I'm not overwhelmed. That it doesn't take me out. When you don't, Jonathan, help me. When you don't, when you don't have relationships, when you are not connected, when you're not serving, when you don't have prayer partners, when you don't have even friends, when you don't, when you just come into service and you, and then soon as service, soon as I say an amen, you jet right out, gone. I'm like, hey, did you see, did you see Mary? Like, oh, down on four, third street. I'm like, man, service just ended. When you don't and the winds and the rain and the storms come, this is what happens. <laughs> Pastor, I got a little spot over here from Easter. The storms in life will come. It's more than a Sunday morning. That's part of it. But it's the, it's the friendships. It's the godly friendships. It's the prayer partners. It's, it's serving. It's helping. It's being connected. There, there are folks in here. I, I, I got this the other day. Um, actually, yesterday, somebody mentioned. She said, they, they said, oh, I, I met somebody. 
and, and they had so much in common. It was so part of their story. And they would have never, one goes to one service, one goes to the other, and they would have never known if, it had not, if they had not served. They both started, went to Grove Track and started serving. And when they got to serving, uh, right, Miss Judy? Miss Judy heads up the serving, and they got connected, and it'd be, it was a divine appointment. And now there's shelter. That's what, it, it's not about, oh, hey, I, 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 I need, you know, we need help and you need to, you know, serve. No, it's at shelter. I got to go. Matthew chapter 16. Did you get my point on that? Can I, can I run out of that point? Matthew 16, verse 18. Let's read this scripture. I'm, th I'm getting through right here. I'm wow. We're on bringing her on down. Matthew 16, 8. You go, girl. And also I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell, the gates of hell, Hades shall not prevail against it. We often presume, presume that the phrase, the gates of hell, that will not prevail against it, describes a church taking on an onslaught of evil. But the word against is not present in the Greek. So translating the phrase without it gives a completely different connotation. Also, I say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now you read it a little different. You say, what do you mean? The gates of hell will not be able to withstand it. Can I go a little deeper in here? We have somehow assumed that Jesus pictured the church on the defensive. Jesus was never on the defensive. They came to him and said, hey, Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said, okay, I got to go. No, Jesus said, go tell that fox. I'll perform miracles today, tomorrow, and the next day. Nothing can stop me. I'm doing the will of God. I'm doing the purpose of my Father. I will accomplish what I've been sent to accomplish. He was never on the defensive. If we really analyze what Jesus meant by his words to Peter, we find that Jesus pictured the church on the offensive. Attacking the gates of Satan. And his promise is that Satan's gates will not hold out against the church. That Satan will not be able to keep the church out. Put it right here. It's not, this phrase is not the church trying to keep Satan out. It's Satan failing to keep the church out. I'll say that again. It's not the church trying to keep Satan out. And that's what we do. So, oh, look okay. Get back, devil. No. On Easter, we celebrated his death, his burial, and resurrection. In other words, he took death, hell, and the grave. The Bible says that he took the keys, not literally keys, but figurative keys. The Bible says that he went down, that we can go up. Y'all don't hear me up in here. In other words, he has called us to be on the offensive. He has called us to advance. He has called us to push. He has called us to take the gospel. The last thing he says before he descends to the Father and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy he goes he said the devils will come after you but they won't be able to hurt you because i've called you to advance the kingdom i have called you to be the church i've called you not to hide but to go somebody shall go if you're really wild and crazy and just do it for my 10 year anniversary this is my present to me jump to your feet and slap a neighbor a high five and tell him he's preaching now he's preaching now yeah that's my present that you just gave me a present he's preaching now he has called us to advance his kingdom. Are you with me here? But the church has turned into a patrol boat. We stay within our lines. We stay here just guarding what we got. 
or we've turned into a cruise ship. We entertain. You go to a cruise, I've never been on one, but the, Joe went for his graduation present last year. He said, Dad, food everywhere. Any time of the day you can eat. I said, that sure sounds like some of these churches. <laughs> feed me, feed me, feed me. What do you got next, Pastor? What do you got next? What do you got next? What, what do you got? Feed me. Just feed me, Pastor. Feed me. Feed me, feed me, feed me. Oh, y'all ain't here. We are not called to be a cruise ship. We are not called to be a, a patrol boat, but we are called to be a rescue boat. We are on a rescue mission. We are called to go towards the wreckage. We are called to go towards those that are in darkness. We are called to go towards those that are in the pit. We are called to go to those that are in mess. We, we are called when people walk in the church and you know they're garbage and you know they're mess, you don't turn a blind eye to them and say, oh, I know them. I know they're family. No, it ought to be. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm so glad. I want to tell you that I don't have my stuff together and I haven't pulled my stuff together. And I know you think my family has it all together, but we don't have it all together. And ever since I've been coming, you were in the right place at the right time at the right moment. Oh, he gets a little wild and he gets a little crazy in the worship. He gets a little bad, but you give it some time and you'll get really into it. We are a rescue mission. Jesus said in Mark chapter, uh, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 and 16, so let your light shine before men. Don't be a bushel and hide. He's telling the church, he's telling the body of Christ, he's telling the bride of Christ not to say, hey, look how bright we are. Look at my light, how it shines. Sorry, real quick. Yeah. Selfie time. We're so bright. <laughs> That's what we do. We're so bright. Look at us. Look at us. Look how bright we are. Woohoo. No, no, no. Can you, can you help me? Somebody help me. They know what I, I, I need to do. Help me. Can we do it? Will it happen? Cut the lights. Yes. He says, I've called you to be the light. He says, I need you looking. I need you looking for those. Oh, I see somebody drowning. I see my neighbor drowning. I see a friend drowning. I see, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to throw them a lifeline, whether they want to catch the lifeline, whether they want to get to rap, whether they want to get help, but I'm going to tell them, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to tell them, hey, listen, I, I know a place. I, I know I'll take you to church. I'll pick you up. I'll help you. I'll do it. I'll pay for your gas. I'll go down the road and I'll get, oh, come on, somebody, somebody just grabbed the, their phone and turned their light on. If you're really a rescue mission, go ahead and grab your phone and turn your light on and lift it up here today and let me know that we're looking that we're a rescue mission that we're coming and we're looking for that Jesus said I've come to seek and save that which is lost that which is in darkness he says I'm looking for some people that are on a rescue mission that are ready to advance the kingdom of God somebody shout yes, yes. Ooh, a lot of lights and I love it you can keep your light on. Yeah, I'll preach like that. Leave those lights on and don't turn the house lights back on. I'm preaching with rescue mission lights. It's letting them know. Listen, remember Tetelestai, it is finished. Easter, right? Anybody remember that? What was it, Tetelestai? It is finished. When he said it is finished, it means your debt of sin is fully paid. The sentence for your punishment for what we deserved has been fully served. The battle is fully won. Yeah, that's what we're letting people know. He's got a plan for you. He's got a purpose for you. You're not a mistake. You're not who they say you are. You're not a druggie. You're not a meth head. You are a king's kid. He forms you. He fashions you. He made you. It's just the enemy has corrupted you. You are not what they say. You are not ugly. You are not what they say. You are not a failure. You're not a disappointment. I don't care what your teachers have said. I don't care what family has said. I don't care what parents have said. I don't care what side of the tracks you grew up. 
up. We're on a mission to tell people there's a plan for you. There's a purpose for you. That God's got a destiny for you. He, you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. The enemy has corrupted you. The enemy has swamped you. You need a pl- You just need a place that has a little bit of shelter. You need a place. I wish I had somebody. I got to go. You need a place in here. You need, I know the place that you can come in and people will help you from the winds and the rains of life. Nehemiah 4 verse 17. Nehemiah 4, it says, those who were rebuilding the wall And those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that everyone worked with one hand and held a weapon with the other. If I would give a message or a title to this message today, we figured it out in the 945 service because I didn't have one. We are an ambidextrous church. Ambidextrous is you can use both hands. Nehemiah says the same thing. The two primary activities here, building and battling. Building and battling. Hello. That means you have here the umbrella, right, in one hand. Let me go this. We have the umbrella in this hand. This is the battling. You say, what do you mean the battling? When when the enemy comes, I got... I got Bible study, I got friendships, I got church service, I got people, I got prayer partners, I got people I hear that when I'm going through the battle, I, I have a shelter, I, I, I have somebody that's going to help me through it. Hello? But hey, Jonathan, I forgot, do we have that? Oh yeah. Thanks buddy. But my other, my paddle is I'm building, I'm building, we're a rescue boat, and you got it. what, God's not called us to be stagnant, but he's called us to keep moving, and Nehemiah says you got to have building and battling, building and battling, battling building, it took me a minute, did you see I paused? You say, what do you mean that? I'm here, I have shelter, but I got to have a paddle of helping. To be the rescue mission, we all shout and we put our lights up and we're like, oh, look what we did. We need, we need help to get there. Hello? A paddle of helping, a paddle of serving, Right? Paddle of serving. How can I serve? How can I, how can I help? How can, how can I get involved? He said, what's helping and serving? What's the difference? I like helping and serving in this kind of terminology. When you go to the airport, you have one hour parking and then you have long-term parking. Helping is like, I can help for about 45 minutes and we'll take the help. Long-term parking is I'm going to grow track and I'm serving. I'm planted, I'm committed. Like you're going to look around at at Huddle and be like, hey, where where is such and such at? They're they're, they're a team. I mean, they're a team and they're they're protective of each other too. I want to be part of that team. Go to Grotrack. Need a paddle of serving, a paddle of ministry. He said, what's a paddle of ministry? I know for a fact, because I get the, the, the connection cards, that people come in here for the first time, they fill out a connection card. And what I get is I know there are people that have been here for about a month and have already invited five or six people to church. I, I, know, I, know, I know for a fact that there are people that have only been coming for a little bit and already went through growth track and already serving and already helping and already involved. Battling, right, and building. Hello? Reaching people. Reaching. Letting a valley know, letting a people know that he's able Ministry, prayer, involvement, giving. Hello, do I have to keep on preaching? Involvement means I'm not going to come in and like the church of the frozen chosen, but I'm going to be involved. Church of giving, a paddle of giving. I'm ending here. And you said, you said it 20 minutes ago. I'm sure I am. 
You can't have a paddle. No, let me put it this way. You can't have the umbrella and not the paddle. Well, I just, I just want the umbrella, Pastor. Uh-uh. It don't work that way. Here's why. You can't be just a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word. You will become unbalanced in your life and what Corinthians calls you will become an immature saint. I'll put it deeper than that. Paul says you'll become a big sissy baby. <laughs> and you'll just want milk. Yum, 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 yum. You have to be balanced. But, but, I told you I'm finishing here. When John comes up, you know it's over. <laughs> but also, I can't just have the paddle and not the umbrella. I can't just be, oh, I'm serving, I'm serving, I'm doing stuff for God. Look at me doing stuff for God. Look at me doing stuff for God and not know the God you're serving and helping and doing. Oh, look, I did this. Help. I, I helped. Look what I've done. But you, you can't quote two scriptures and you've been, been here for four years? That's, that's a problem. And sometimes we can get caught. I, I myself find that all the, t all the time. I battle to make sure I have this balance in life. Balance of what? Oh, I'm preaching. Look what I'm doing for you, God. Look what I'm doing for you, God. Look, I'm preaching. And I, oh, look at the people. Come, look what, oh, we got people serving. We got people helping. And then I could be shriveling up. So I balance to make sure that I have the relationships, the friendships that I'm talking, that I have prayer partners, people praying, people that I can talk to, people I can vent to, while I'm also serving and serving. Ambidextrous. If we got ushers, ushers, come on. I need to get you to our after party. <laughs> Look at Jonathan's one right there. Been coming. How many months you been coming now? A couple months? December. 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 Went to growth track. And then you're serving today. Come on, somebody. That's what it's about right there. <laughs> Go to... You go to Bible study too. You're at the. You're. You got way better attendance than I do. <laughs> he was like, "Yeah." <laughs> That's true. All right, let's pray, and then the ushers are going to go. Father, we thank you today, Lord. I pray for Impact Church. I pray for the people of Impact Church, Lord, that we be ambidextrous. Lord, that we'd, we'd the shelter, that we'd have the relationships, the friendships, the, the connections, the prayer partners that were involved in each other's lives. And I pray for those that are serving, that you would continue to strengthen them, that Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, they, they show up, many show up on Saturday night and start putting things together. And many are here early in the morning to say for both services, I pray that you would begin to strengthen them. But Lord, I pray that we'd never become unbalanced. Now we won't lean on one or the other. And Lord, help us. I know it's a 10 year and let us never forget this message that we are a rescue, rescue boat. Not a patrol, not a cruise, not a lounging, but a rescue mission. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.